In April 2021, Kevin De Bruyne sat alone in a room with Manchester City's top negotiators. His father and lawyers were with him on FaceTime, but his longtime agent was languishing in a Belgian prison cell. De Bruyne had one simple goal, to get a pay rise. The weirdest part of this whole story is the fact that De Bruyne was even in the room. Most footballers are busy getting massages or spray tans while their agent takes over contract negotiations. But De Bruyne was successful. The revelation that he had managed to negotiate a new contract without an agent shocked the footballing world and led to the question, do football players really need agents anymore? Welcome to Athletic Interest. In this video we learn how the rise of the so-called CEO footballer is radically changing the role of modern football agents. An agent is a person who has been legally empowered to act on behalf of someone else. This includes representing them in a negotiation or entering into agreements with third parties. For example, real estate agents will help someone sell a house by talking to potential buyers and handling all of the complicated paperwork. In return for this convenient service, they will take a small percentage of the sale price. The idea of a football agent is a relatively modern idea and FIFA did not officially recognize their existence until 1994. In 2002, there were a total of 179 licensed football agents in England, 82 in Germany, and 54 in Italy. Fast forward to today and agents have become some of the most influential people in football. Mino Raiola is a household name and in 2015 FIFA estimated that there were close to 5000 agents in world football. The opening up of the European transfer market after the 1995 Bosman case saw fees and player wages increase at a staggering rate. In 1994 Chris Sutton became the first player in the UK to earn 10,000 pounds per week. Seven years later, Saul Campbell signed a £100,000 per week deal with Arsenal. With the stakes rising and the money flowing, it was only a matter of time before agents started showing up. Agents became responsible for almost every aspect of a player's life. Contract negotiations, public relations, sponsorship agreements and financial planning are all within an agent's job description. Every aspect of a player's commercial life will go through their agent. All in return for a 5-10% to 10 cut of the earnings. Many agencies even offer what is known as the 360 degree service. Here the agent will take over every task that doesn't involve playing football. They will organize the shopping, pay the bills and even plan holidays. Some have been known to offer psychological support and will even mediate disputes between players. Mario Balotelli and his agent Mino Raiola enjoy an almost symbiotic relationship. When Balotelli noticed a fire at his house, he immediately called Raiola, who promptly advised him to call the fire brigade. In September 2020, Belgian police arrested Kevin De Bruyne's longtime agent. He was detained on suspicion of money laundering based on a complaint filed by De Bruyne himself. De Bruyne was now without an agent, months before negotiations began with Manchester City over a new contract. Instead of running into the arms of one of the super agents, De Bruyne made the unprecedented decision to represent himself. Things got off to a challenging start, with City offering a deal that would see the Belgian earning less per year than under his previous contract. Undeterred, De Bruyne hired Analytics FC, a data analytics company, to compile a report outlining how crucial he was to the success of the team. The city board couldn't argue with the data and finally offered De Bruyne the pay rise he deserved. This outcome hints at a monumental shift in the footballing world. Agents make their money on the promise that their skills and talents are the only way for players to ensure a fair wage and De Bruyne has just achieved the same result on his own. People began to ask whether this is the beginning of the end for football agents. In reality, the De Bruyne case has more to do with the changing nature of what it means to be a modern footballer. You will struggle to find a footballer that doesn't have their own personal brand. There's Memphis Depay with MDC, Jesse Lingard with J Lings, Mesut Özil with M10 and our personal favorite Christian Fuchs and No Fuchs Given. Footballers see the age of social media as the perfect opportunity to leverage their increasing popularity to create clothing lines, esports teams, and even nutrition companies. 
This is very different from traditional endorsement deals. When Ronaldo is pictured with Nike, he is representing a product that is created by other people. With his brand CR7, he is selling his own values, ideals and personality. Footballers are working hard at establishing these personal brands and know that if they are to be successful, they need to establish their own authentic voice. Speaking on the decision to fire his agent, Bayern Munich midfielder Joshua Kimmich told reporters, This is a conscious decision that I made last year. I have decided for myself that I want to stand up for my values and my views even more, and that I want to live up to my personal responsibility. As European sports becomes increasingly Americanized, it won't surprise many that Jay-Z could be behind the recent shift towards personal branding. The American rapper's management agency, Rock Nation Sports, has partnered with a number of European footballers, including Romelu Lukaku and Marcus Rashford. Their PR team even helped Rashford with his personal campaign to take on Boris Johnson. It is no coincidence that Rock Nation also represents Kevin De Bruyne. The idea to go without an agent likely originated from their PR team. What better way to show the Belgian as a strong, powerful figure than to have him negotiate alone with one of the biggest football teams on the planet? With footballers taking on more responsibilities, they are re-evaluating their advisors and starting to build a trusted circle. Mohamed Salah recently replaced his agent with lawyer and personal friend Rami Abbas Issa. The pair first met when Abbas worked as a translator for Salah's former agent. As the only two Arabic speakers in the room, they quickly formed a strong friendship. Salah has had a rough time with agents. While struggling at Chelsea, he started to doubt his agent Oliver Cronenberg's advice and looked to quickly replace him. The fallout led to Salah tweeting out against Cronenberg, warning people to not believe a word he said. Another factor to consider is the cost of having an agent. For 2019 alone, agent fees totaled $653 million. Players have begun to question whether the agent's negotiation skills can truly justify giving up 10 or 15 percent of their wages. In the words of Kevin De Bruyne, I'm happy in Manchester. At the moment I'm doing the talks myself. I would like to stay with the club, so it's easy. If I didn't want to stay, it would take someone to mediate. But when you want to stay, it's not so difficult. This is not the beginning of the end for football agents. Many footballers would be less successful without the influence of their agents. They can be fierce advocates for their clients' interests and are capable of handling the less exciting aspects of footballing life. That being said, there are growing concerns that agents are being paid too much. FIFA has proposed regulations that cap agent fees at 3% of a player's wages and plan to introduce a new licensing scheme to control agent numbers. De Bruyne's actions and the growing trend of self-representation among top footballers come from a desire to rebuild trust, take back control and the realization that agents may not be as valuable as their incredible salaries suggest. What is without a doubt very valuable? Becoming an AI patron. Help us make more videos and build this amazing community by joining us on patreon.com slash athleticinterest.